Hi, I'm Eric Stern, and that was Le Clochard de Paris by Gisela Prost. I haven't been able to find out too much about uh, Gisela Prost. I've looked her up online. Um, she had a bunch of, of songs in a book called Bal de, Mu Bal de Musette. Um, but if, if you could find out information from her and, and let me know in the comments, I, I'd love to know more. But I'll, I'll keep looking, too. But uh, maybe, maybe there's a long-lost relative of hers out there somewhere or... Um, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the song and what I do in it. Um, I feel like I'm a decent accordionist. There are uh, a lot better out there for sure. Um, but one of the purposes of these videos is to sort of reveal the, the, the bones and structures of some of the things that I do when I play in solo. And maybe that'll give you some ideas as well. So let's talk about the structure of the song itself. It's in D minor, and uh, the first thing that happens is there's a progression of fourths with the chords. There's your fourth, right? So that, to me, uh, that is something that I would use in my own composing. Um, it's a beautiful sound to me. It's a very French sound, actually. Uh, so if I, let's, let's go to C minor. Uh, and I wanted to sort of, I'll just do it off the top of my head, but I'm going to just go up and forth and see what happens. Uh, and then that kind of leads you to the five. But uh, all of those up to this were in fourths. Um, and, and it's already been done. It's in, you'll see it in Autumn Leaves. And, and your your uh, left hand will just go down there and forth. So that's something that you can use in compositions. It's a very French sound. Uh, the interesting thing about this song, though, is once we get to the uh, the I don't know the main part, is that there is the five of five. So what is the five of five? That that sounds like some some cabalistic stuff or something. But really, what it is is uh, in in any key. You know, you have your Roman numeral, so um, uh, I won't go too basic in these in these videos, but I don't want to get too advanced either. So sort of right in the middle. Uh, but if it's too high level, you you just go ahead and 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 send me a question. But uh, so D minor, the five, I just count five. So the five chord is A seven. 
uh, in in the kind of D minor, the kind of minor that we're playing. So then the five of that, I've started A, is E. And we're going to make it an E7. That's what happens uh, E dominant 7. So we have that 7th there. Uh, so the way it sounds, right? So here's your 1 chord. Your 5 of 5. And it's very, it creates some tension. And you release it by going to the 5. But you still need to get back to the 1. So again, let's pick a key. Let's pick G minor. So the 5 of 5 would be, here's G, here's D, so it's A7. Uh, and of course, you can think of it as the major 2 or something like that. But so so if I wanted to compose uh, something and, uh, you know, I want to, I, I just want to use the structure. So I want to get away a little bit from Gisela Prost. Um, you know, I don't want people... Uh, accusing me of ripping her off or even being derivative. Uh, so, but you know, you could you do another time signature. G minor, A7. So there you are, the five of five. Uh, and again, it creates that in Turkish and Arabic music, they call it a suspension. Um, I don't know if they call it that in Western music, but it's it's where you're you're suspended because you you want something to happen. Uh, Arthur Rubinstein's wife, famous pianist Arthur Rubinstein, would uh, if if he wasn't getting out of bed in the morning, she would she would do that the the very same thing. She would create this tension. She'd play. Let's be in a major key right now. Um, she'll she be she'll so. <laughs> We are D major, so she would play a progression. So there's the five, not the five of five, but just the five. And then she would leave the piano, and and Arthur Rubinstein that would drive him crazy. He had to come down and go. Uh, yeah, uh, it works in in major too. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So here's the five of five in D. It's an E. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Not sure if that is actually the right chord for that song. But uh, but the 5 of 5 works for uh, for D as well. Yes, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, uh, for major chords. Anyway, uh, let's go on. Be, let's move beyond the structure. And I want to tell you some of the things that I was doing. Uh, to get that Parisian feel... I do a lot of chromaticism and smearing the notes. What does that mean? Um, so instead of going... Um, I'll go... So... I am... I am going from one note to another chromatically, even if the cro the chromatic note is, is not in the scale, and just using it as a passing way, and I'm using my ear, my uh, air here, and my ear, of course. Uh, for example, let's say, let's take a really stupid song. Oh, it's a wonderful song. Mary Had a Little Lamb. No, no such thing as a stupid song. Well, is that true? Uh, no, I think there are stupid songs out there. But let's take Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> Let's beef it up. Let's make it a little Parisian. If you have a musette read. What a great effect. Um, so go ahead and practice. Just take any simple song and, and add the chromatic notes. And there you've got... You've got your uh, chromaticism. Okay, uh, the soloing. So, uh, I, I did something like this. So, 
at some point I did that, I know. So that that is just, you remember the song Shardas um, by Monty? It's a, one that violinists play, but also accordionist, right? That one. So, but the beginning is you have this... Something like that. Well, somewhere in my memory banks, I played that so much, and this is the great thing about just playing all sorts of songs, uh, I was able to just stick it in there. Um, the next thing I did, I think I played what's called an octatonic scale. And you can, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain, but there are three of them. Maybe it's very simple to explain. You go start on a note, play a half step above that, a step above that, a half step above that, a step above that. Uh, you can look up octatonic scales. I can't go too deeply into that, but uh, all the dominants fit into one of the octa one of the three octatonic scales. So uh, A7. A seven. So here's a, here comes the A seven with the octatonic. Now I probably did a little things in the end, uh, a little jazzy. Uh, and ideally, uh, you know, if my fingers aren't slipping up, I would sort of stick all that stuff in there, right? I'd do a little octatonic, a little jazz, and a little Parisian. Okay. The final thing that I can remember that I did was something uh, I have had the good fortune to play with so many wonderful musicians. And one of my favorite musicians to play with was Skip Von Kusky. Um... And uh, I'll put it in the present. Uh, uh, I haven't played with him for a while, but but Skip, if you're out there, we should get together. Um, uh, so he and I were in a band I started called Vagabond Opera. And I got to a very humbling experience. He, he would be off to off to my uh, right, I guess, every night. And and I got to hear him solo and Honestly, he blew me out of the water. Not that it was a contest, but, uh, you know, I would try to, like, sometimes, it, it, you know, and I, I knew, how did I know he blew me out of the water? Because most of the time, um, if it were him, if, if he, were, he and I, and, and I would go and he would go, I would play a solo and the audience maybe would clap, maybe not. He would play a solo, the audience would go crazy. Um, and being the leader of the band, I thought, well, maybe it's about who goes first. So, you know, I'd switch it up and he'd play a solo, audience would go crazy. I'd play a solo and the audience, you know, would not go crazy. Once in a while they would. Um, but one of the things that I noticed Skip doing, and it's not necessarily something I think of as accordionistic, it's more of a string player thing he would uh he played the cello and skip would hang on to one note on the bottom and then play the other notes uh over it so here's what i did so i i started to pick that up so let's take this note a and here i'm playing my solo i'd switch no bottom note because i have to stay within the chord you can keep going. Here's the G minor with a D on the bottom. You practice that, and uh, and oh, and and you know you can practice it. You can do that. Uh, go below too, right? Um, instead of going above the note. You could go. Well, I'm sort of playing Bach there, aren't I? Okay. Mm. I'm so used to the other way. I'll, I'll have to practice that. I think those are all the things that I did in this song. Uh, we looked at the structure the the fourths we looked at the five of five we did some parisian stuff uh and then the actual soloing was uh using just a little lick from shardust and an octatonic scale 
uh, and some other stuff too. And, and then this hanging on to one note and playing the other ones. Now, one thing that I want to say about a solo is too many people will just use it as a, a way to be flashy and, and, and try to just get everything out there and, and, you know, and, and, and play all their licks and everything. A solo, and this is the most difficult part, and I'm not sure if I succeeded in, in this round when I played. I hope I did. It's got to be unified. It's got to tell a story. You can't just have a series of crazy scales and everything, and that's kind of the hardest thing. Um, I could play this solo much more simply the, the way that I was taught to think of a solo, and I'll talk about this more in the next video, I think, but was that uh, you just think of it as another version of the song, or it's its own song with those chord progressions. So my only point is that I would rather hear and I would rather make a solo that's unified and slow and doesn't have a bunch of, is not noty, rather than um, have a bunch of pyrotechnics. That's my preference. And I think in the end, people like that better. So for example, I don't have to do all of that, all that stuff. I could just go two notes so far. So keep that in mind as well. If you can't if you can't figure out the octatonic and all that other stuff, have no fear. You just you just play play it from the heart, yes, but keep it keep it unified, right? Keep it unified. Have the beginning, middle, end, have it tell a story. I'll talk more about that in the next video. For now, I'm Eric Stern. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. And uh, I also have lots of ways of supporting me uh, that you'll find down there in the, in the uh, description. Thank you so much. And until next time, farewell. Au revoir, as maybe they would say in Paris. <laughs>